Thank you very much, Adam, for this kind introduction, and ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to take it from these two beautiful previous lectures covering the basic and translational stuff into what we know and what we do in the clinic. Um, I should first say that pain is not only about pain. Pain is the foremost complication to chronic pancreatitis, and one of the reasons is that you often have postprandial worsening of the pain, therefore they cannot eat, and therefore the enzyme treatment doesn't work at all. Furthermore, you should also be aware that if you do not have any food in your gut, you cannot control the diabetes at all. So pain has much more complex interactions with everything in chronic pancreatitis. It's not only about pain. So, there are many treatment possibilities, and I should tell you, you don't need to take any pictures here, because I'll show you the publication we came up with uh, in my last slide, and this is open access, so everybody can have access to it. So, so you don't need to spend your time for that. You better listen to what I say or prepare your questions. But this is a previous slide from Dr. Olison showing the different treatment modalities. I'm just showing you that because I want to stress that there is no a lack of standardization to all these different treatment modalities. We have so many, we don't know what to do. And in order to overcome that, different authors have tried to come up with flow charts and guidelines of how to increase, uh, sorry, to improve the treatment of pain. The problem is that these have been rather simple and very much focused on what they do at the different sites. So in order to overcome that, this is also in the publication, we came up in an international guideline group with a suggestion for how to treat pancreatic pain medically. And it could be a bit, uh, say, busy slide to look into, but it's not that complex. And the whole idea behind the slide is that we have a paradigm shift in pancreatology. First of all, we established an international group to homogenize the treatment throughout the world. Second, it was multidisciplinary because we invited people, not only gastroenterology surgeons, endoscopists, but psychologists, nurses, whatever you can think about. And finally, it is mechanism-based. As Sean showed, we know a lot about the different pain mechanisms. We try to target those in the treatment algorithm. I should also say that today our focus, because time is limited, on the medical treatment mainly. I'm also a gastroenterologist, that is what I do. You also have possibilities for um, endoscopical, surgical treatment, etc., etc. There is an ongoing dispute whether or not this is indeed very helpful. For the patients, but that I'll leave to another occasion. The medical therapy is the gray in the boxes in the algorithm. So if we start from scratch and look into it, I don't know if you, oh yeah, you can read it from there. First of all, you have to consider, is there an indication for treatment? I mean, is the pain severity sufficient enough? Is there an impact of quality of life, etc., etc.? Otherwise, don't treat the pain because all treatments have side effects. If you consider that this is important, the most important thing here is to consider the secondary causes for pain, not the primary causes. And the reason for that is this is another slide, and this is also, you can download it for free in Pancropedia, as you can see in the corner here, um, uh, uh, because that is the different reasons for pain in chronic pancreatitis, and a lot of these are really secondary. That is, for example, peptic ulcer that we've seen up to 30% of the patients because they have um, a bad uh, blood circulation. It could also be opioid-induced bowel dysfunction, surgical complications, bacterial overgrowth, back, uh, enteropathy due to the diabetes, etc. And all this can be treated rather successfully. And this is the primary aim for gastroenterologists to treat the secondary complication because Treatment of primary pancreatic pain, ladies and gentlemen, is very, very difficult. Coming back to the treatment approaches, of course you have to consider whether or not there are any red flags for malnutrition, alcohol behavior, smoking, etc., etc. And if this is the case, treat that, try to get the patients uh, abstinent, reduce uh, tobacco consumption, improve nutritional status, because it has been shown even though not in RCTs, but it has been shown that it also improves health quality and then improves pain. And if it works, it's fine, leave it there. If it doesn't, uh, typically we 
consider whether or not there is any obstruction of the main pancreatic ducts due to stretches and stones. If there is, we normally have them to um, uh, take the patients for our multidisciplinary clinic, discuss whether or not we believe that there could be any effect of endoscopy. If there is, we subject them to endoscopy, and if it's effective, it's very good. We can also use ESWL, but that's another discussion. If it's effective, fine, we stop there. If not, what then to do? And people claim, well, um, then it's uh, an autonomic, that's right here, pancreatic, pancreatic pain. What to deal with that? What can we do? Um, well, we have a lot of different drugs that has been shown to have an effect in chronic pancreatitis. Some of these have been proven in studies that are really RCTs. Some of them are more like open studies or case uh, series. But uh, there is rather good indication that CCK inhibition, antioxidant, and adjuvant analgesics, as Sean showed with pregabalin, and also opioids and NMDA antagonists in experimental studies can have an effect on pancreatic pain. So we have an armamentarium to use and to deal with to treatment of these patients. And what we normally do is we, we say, okay, those drugs with least side effects, such as paracetamol, in some cases NSAIDs, um, are very effective with these patients, and then leave it uh, here. Of course, we try to avoid NSAIDs because of the severe side effects, especially in patients with chronic pancreatitis, but in some cases, they're rather effective. So, if that doesn't work, um, what we do is that we consider non-coded and uh, enzymes, um, it may be pancreatic rest and maybe antioxidants. This is something that is very variable throughout the world, whether or not you will select such treatments for the patients. It's mainly used in India, not that much in the Western world, and I'm not coming to the documentation. You can read all that um, in the paper I'll show you uh, in the end. I'll just show you the rationale for that. The whole idea is CCK stimulation of the pancreas. When the nutrients come into the duodenum, um, there is a release of CCK releasing factor. This again stimulates the intestine to produce CCK, and CCK uh, has a direct effect on the brain where it actually uh, worsens uh, the pre existing pain, but it also has an effect on the pancreas. It squeezes the gland, and especially if there are strictures or stones, or if it's a neuropathy, that can result in pain. Furthermore, if uh, you have maldigestion because you do not have enzymes, uh, then it also results in pathological motility and uh, also changes the ileal break. So all that can give pain. And this is the rationale for enzymes, because what enzymes do, especially if they are non-coded, is that they can cleave uh, the CCK releasing factor, and therefore there's no stimulation of the CCK, if you can follow that. So this is the whole rationale for that treatment. So what uh, we have seen is that patients with pain, uh, they have much higher levels of CCK as compared to patients without pain. And the treatment of that is, of course, to give them either enzymes or to, for example, pass a tube into the jet genome so you bypass the whole pancreas and the whole CCK secretion. Um, you have also possibilities for giving different nutrients and so on. But most of these uh, treatment series are based on very few patients, but in some cases they are really effectful. And as again, as I said before, it may change somewhat between the countries. Um, there has also been an approach to use CCK antagonists, as, as you can see, in certain doses that have been effective, effective as compared to placebo. The problem is that the effect has not been sufficiently uh, to, to really uh, reach the market. So, um, antioxidants has been shown, this is a rather recent uh, uh, meta-analysis, the problem is that uh, even though they have been shown to have an effect, if you take those studies out that are, uh, that, uh, that are not randomized control trials, the difference was not significant. So uh, we really not believe in that. But again, in some cases, some patients, it may be uh, very effective and also uh, enzyme treatment itself it can in many ways, for example, by regulation motility, also be effective against pain. Well, now we have used the simple approaches, and what to do then? Uh, most people will say, well, we use the WHO ladder for pain treatment, let's step up. 
But what we do is, as was also mentioned before, we else, come on, we consider whether or not the patients are really depressed because depression is typically seen up to 40%. I mean, I'm speaking about significant depression, not only anxiety measured on, for example, the HADS scale. And we measure that, and if they have signs or evidence of depression and severe anxiety, we treat them with drugs such as tricyclic antidepressives, SNRIs or SSRIs, uh, in order to have an effect both on the pain system and on the depression. And again, if it's effective, we just follow the patients. Well, in some cases, patients can benefit from cognitive behavioral therapies, etc., etc. We shouldn't forget about that. For hardcore gastroenterologists and surgeons, um, this is something uh, that, that they'll never go to. But you should be aware that if you look into the effect, or cognitive behavioral therapy in other pain disorders, they actually have been very sufficient. And number needed to treat here is three, which is much better than the 10 sold with pregabalin. And this is as good as most analgesics. So you shouldn't forget about that, I think. This is something that is effective, but the data we have in chronic pancreatitis are not good. We came up with a suggestion to give hypnotherapy, actually presented on a poster on Saturday, um, and it was very effective in this very little series of three patients as a case. But we believe that there is room for improvement and also for such studies. Well, beyond psychology and the simple analgesics, antioxidants, etc., what to do then? Um, then we look into the central sensitization, as we have heard so much uh, about in the two previous lectures. Um, you saw that, so and showed that slide with pregabalin that is effective in chronic pancreatitis. The problem is often uh, how to, which patients to treat. And again, what we do is that we use this very simple skin muscle uh, quantitative sensory testing that you have seen demonstrated before. And the rationale here is that we have an increased barrage uh, of nociceptive input from the pancreas to the spinal cord, which is sensitized. And therefore, we have, sorry for that, go back. And therefore, um, we have an increased afferent barrage coming up to the brain from this segmental area, which is about T10 on the skin. In contrast to that, at least in some patients where the sensation has not yet spread to the central nervous system, uh, there is no such aggravation of the pain um, from, from, from the, if you stimulate the skin as, from, as here uh, above the clavicula. And therefore you look into this difference between the stimulation here and the stimulation intensity at C5. And if you do that, you can actually predict the likelihood of pregabalin responses with up to 80%. This is totally new. So the more segmental hyperalgesia you have in the pancreatic dermatome here at the abdomen, the better effect of the drug. This is what we call individual, individual tailored therapy, and this is published in PLUS ONE, which is again open access. Um, another thing you heard about, because now I want to tell you once again, because people don't understand that, this is a temporal summation. What we do is that we stimulate, and please look at this slide, with a stimulation intensity of zero, the same intensity, but 0 0.1 hertz. And if you do that, you have the same pain response every time for each stimulus. If you do nothing but change, and that is over the ampere receptor, sorry. If you only change the stimulation frequency, but not the intensity, and do it like that, you have a buildup of the pain response. So we have more pain for the last stimulus as the first one. This is something called wind-up, temporal summation, central integration, whatever. It has many nicknames, but it is, this illustrates sensitization of the system. And this is something that is uh, over the NMDA receptor. Nevertheless, there is evidence that gabapentinoids have more effect, for example, if you do temporal summation as shown in this paper here, but that is in somatic studies. This is not in pancreas pancreatitis patients. But still we believe that there is a clue that if they have more uh, temporal summation, there may be better effect, again, of the gap pensionals. Okay, we use that, but we also use uh, the quantitative sensory testing in other ways. 
for example, if we look into designing inhibition. But first of all, if they have increased temporal summation or specifically segmental hyperalgesia, we use uh, pregabalin or gabapentin, and if it works, we follow the patients. If not, what then to do? Then we look into the descent inhibition that Søren also uh, explained to you before, I'll not do that again, and we see whether or not they have effective descent inhibition. Because if we have actually the possibility, that if they do not have that as shown in this study, we have the possibility to give different drugs, such as for example terpentadol, that has been shown to improve descending inhibition, at least if you give it in about two weeks. So there is evidence from other studies that you, are, that you can actually potentiate the descending inhibition. Um, so if we have descending inhibition that is malfunctioning, we start terpentadol, SNRIs, we can also use clonidine and other different stuffs. So, so, and if it works, we follow the patients. So now, ladies and gentlemen, I still have 11 minutes left. Uh, we're moving into the opioids, because if it doesn't work here, we have nothing else to work with. And normally, we start with the weaker opioids, typically those that have more effects that's not only on the mu receptor. Um, and the rationale for that um, is not that well covered in, I would say, quantitative sensory testing. There is some evidence that we can use that as well to predict the effect of opioids, but data goes a bit up and down. And again, I should say, this is in other somatic, in somatic diseases, not in visceral pain. So what we do is we typically try weak opioids, for example, a drug like tramadol, because it has been shown in chronic pancreatitis by Dr. Clive Wilder smith that if in equipotent doses, um, for the same effect, it has less side effects at least. And one of the reasons is that tepen, sorry, tramadol uh, also works on the SNRI and SSRI mechanisms and also has peripheral effects and so on. But still, it's an opioid. Um, if it doesn't work, if it works okay, it's fine. If it doesn't work, we have to move on to the stronger opioids. We try to avoid that for many reasons, but in many patients, and I would say up to about 40% of our patients with pain, we, the only thing we have to use is strong opioids. We, we, I mean, we have to alleviate the pain somehow, and I'm not that opiophobe uh, than uh, many others are. Uh, but the problem is that it often doesn't work. And the reason for that is typically that those doctors that are allowed to prescribe opioids, the typically junior doctors, or people not used to use opioids, that are some of the most complex drugs that we have at all. You should be aware that there are many good algorithms, as for example this recent position paper I also uh, co-authored, in about how to use opioids in pain and how to, what to take uh, into consideration and how to treat the side effects. Because there are many differences between opiates, as we showed in another paper here. All opiates are not the same. If morphine doesn't work, oxycodone could, or ketabimidone could. And you have to be aware that you have to try different opiates in order to get the optimal balance between effects and side effects. Then, if you're an expert, it's not that problematic. But there is still a lot of opiophobia out there. And I think, I think really it's a pity, because there are many side effects but they can easily be treated, and if you do it correctly, you don't result, uh, it doesn't result in, in, in additive behavior or anything like that. So often it's about the bad doctor. Sorry to say that to my colleagues, but this is really true. Well, in some cases, we use also the QST battery in order to assess whether the opiates have uh, made any really harmful side effects such as opiate-induced hyperalgesia. This is mainly a clinical decision where pain becomes worse and worse the more opiate you give, and the only uh, treatment for that is to taper the opiates down. I'm not going into details with that because it could be a bit cumbersome, and I only have seven minutes left, and um, we also need time for questions. Um, there are also other things that we use. We all, always consider if they have opiate induced bowel dysfunction. We speak, we, we treat relaxatives, we treat with opiate, uh, local opiate antagonists. Um, we also have the possibility to treat with neuromodulation and other stuff. There uh, has been rather good evidence that some neuromodulation, such as transcranial magnetic stimulation and spinal cord uh, stimulation, is effective also in control studies in pancreas, in, in pain in chronic pancreatitis. Um, 
Acupuncture has been very much discussed whether or not it's effective. Uh, we made a st uh, two studies. First, we, 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 we made uh, a paradigm where we could use a placebo-controlled study for acupuncture. Second, we did a study in chronic pancreatitis, and you can see in only 17 patients, the active treatment was much better than the sham. So there is definitely room uh, for improvement. You could use neuromodulation such as acupuncture or maybe vagal nerve stimulations, other kinds of stimuli that seems to be rather effective. The problem with acupuncture is that it only lasts 24 hours and you have to do it repeatedly. And this is, of course, a problem in clinical practice. So, um, again, there are other possibilities. Some touch that about you can use ketamine, you can use direct, direct current stimulation. There are uh, other possibilities, but it's not that well documented. I just added it here. You should also be aware that many of the patients, when they arrive, they have both psychological problems, autonomic pancreatic pain, and there could also be malnutrition altogether. So it's not such that you can just follow the algorithm. You have to step in and out of it. Um, and many patients, when they come to us, pity to say, but they're already on strong opioids, and then it's difficult to start from scratch and prescribe the right drugs. But if you can have them from scratch, I think you should try to follow the algorithmic approach. Then the question always arises, is it something that is too complex for gastroenterologists and especially surgeons? Sorry. <laughs> um, well, um, it should always be the gastroenterologist or the endoscopist or the surgeon that is, takes care of the patients that should have con control of that. Because remember, there's so many secondary reasons that may not come up from the beginning, may, may pop up later during treatment that only you can treat. And therefore, you have to be control. This is very important. And the final slide is that, please remember, we wrote this paper, the International Guidelines, published two months ago, I think it was, in pancreatology, free download. It's a normal paper with a great classification, but an appendix up to 130 pages where you can see all the details, if you want to, including what I have shown here. Thank you very much.